This is Iron Guard, a room scale size tower defense title that has you building, upgrading, harvesting, and of course shooting your way to freedom from an army of rogue robots. This is out October 27th, 2022 for both the Quest 2 and PC VR, and this review will cover both versions. Guys, I had a blast with this simple but addictive title, so stick around and I'll tell you why. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Shug from the VR Grid, and this is my review for Iron Guard. However, before we get into it, if you like this video, please like it, and if you aren't already subscribed, please consider doing so. Also, one quick note, the Virtual Boys podcast is live on this channel every Thursday evening at 6 p.m. Pacific time, then posted later in the evening everywhere. Now, let's get into the review. The year is 2232 AD, and the crew of the Avalon has crash-landed on the planet Acris while trying to investigate why an earlier drone ship carrying the AI Transformer bots lost contact. As First Officer Graves, it is up to you to protect the lives of the surviving crew, defend all, and secure resources from the onslaught of the out-of-control Terraformer bots, all of which seem to oddly obey traffic laws. Anyways, as with the rest of the story, trust me and don't think about it too hard because it really doesn't matter. However, what matters greatly is gameplay. And fortunately for what is a tried and true tower defense title, Iron Guard knows what it is and does a great job of nailing the essentials. First off, this is a single player experience only and can be played offline. The meat of the game here is a 30 mission campaign that depending on your skill should take you anywhere from 7 to 10 hours to complete. First mission in and things start off pretty simple. The core gameplay here is wave based with a rest period in between giving you time to develop your defense strategy. Enemies attack along set designated paths which do switch up between waves, often allowing you, who is on a budget off the hop, to focus on individual paths for a few rounds to not only build defenses but also to test to see if they actually hold before the game introduces multiple paths attacking simultaneously. This was an approach that I really appreciated as it kept the early moments more strategic and experimental than simply stressful. Further to this, upon death, the order in which paths will attack is mixed up, keeping you on your toes and avoiding the irritation of repeating the exact same situation over and over while still maintaining the various strategies that you might be trying to develop for a specific mission. Early missions arm you with a simple combo of a machine gun turret and an electric turret that slows down enemy movements, the former of which can be upgraded on the fly to attack harder. In addition to your deployable units, your right hand also holds a ship which has a basic laser blast to assist where needed. Personally, I found this really helpful when testing an attack path out and cleaning up the few that got through on a failed blockade. The enemy fleet consists of a few different drones with some being fast but fragile with others being slow and heavy and a few variations in between. Early strategy here is learning what to do with not just the different types of units, but more importantly what to do when they are grouped up in different combinations. For example, in the early stages, I found that I could take down the heavy units only to have my turrets focused on them and then let the fast drones fly past to take out the base I was protecting. Later missions see the introduction of many other robots, some of which will even act as support robots such as healing some of the heavy convoys, which can really mix up your strategy. Now if it wasn't evident from the gameplay you're seeing in a traditional tower fence style, the build model here is currency based with each unit you place costing a specific amount to place and an additional expense to be upgraded if that unit is upgradable. Later in the game a simple harvesting mechanic is brought in in which you can pay to place a harvester over resources which in turn can generate additional revenue during that mission. Now, in a move I really liked, enemy units do not attack your placed units, meaning you can place and essentially forget them. And while I realize this could have added more depth to the gameplay, the developer seems to have found a really nice balance between giving you enough to focus on with multiple paths to keep tabs on, but also giving you enough time to sit back and just see if your plan is working and then assess, instead of constantly zipping around fixing crumbling units. This style choice can be evidenced again by how free-flying drones will go after you, but never attacking your base. And instead of inflicting ship damage, they drain your energy level to shoot and deploy airstrikes. Now, placing rocket turrets can take these down, but that also distracts those turrets from other tasks, making it something you can decide on how to deal with and to what degree. Now, like I said, the game starts off simple. However, thankfully, the game is consistently introducing new enemy types, new map layouts, new biomes, and most importantly, new weapons for you to play with some of which will be given to you during a mission, but many of which will be required to unlock using earned skill points. Skill points are primarily based on completing missions and the performance of said missions, but can also be picked up on the roadways from downed enemies. I love a good progression system in my games, and Iron Guard did not disappoint. 
offering up enough choice in weaponry for me to pick up and prioritize my own attack styles. Weapons on offer vary from rocket, fire, and laser turrets, all of which can be further upgraded to additional weapon upgrades to your handheld ship, and an assortment of airstrikes that power up during the battle and can be unleashed in dire moments of need. Another aspect of the progression system that I liked was if I found out I was getting my ass kicked during a mission, I could go back and improve on a previous mission score to earn more experience points and buy better gear to help me push forward. And the game does this in a way that felt like a choice and never simply to grind out game length. Now, one area where the game does fall a little short is in mission variety. There are 30 missions to complete, all of which do an incredible job of mixing up attack style paths in ways that actually affect gameplay. However, they are essentially all wave-based protect the base missions. The story tries to give some meaning to these, and the game does try to mix things up, adding in some variety to the wave type gameplay. But really, you are still placing units and holding the line until a given amount of time has passed, waves have been completed, or money has been earned. As such, as hard as the game tries to introduce ideas throughout the campaign, it does begin to get a bit samey if you do too many missions in a row. However, like I said, Iron Guard knows what it is and it doesn't try to hide that fact. A quick note about moving in game though, you will see I have been flying around the level. However, you can choose to teleport if you prefer. I had on what the game called smooth turning, however, it still seemed to click turn, so I often found myself simply turning in my chair. Hopefully this is something they fix with a patch. Also, the Quest version does have height controls, allowing you to go lower and higher in the game world. However, they are in the settings menu, and it would have been nice to be able to adjust those in-game on the fly. Sorry PC guys, this option was oddly absent from the PC version, so hopefully this gets patched in later. Taking a look at the visuals, at a quick glance, both the Quest 2 and PCR versions look very similar, and they are. Much in the same way Demio on Quest 2 looks when compared to the PC VR version. What I mean by that is the Quest 2 version looks absolutely fine when playing inside the headset. Objects are sharp enough and the headset handles the high action moments flawlessly. However, when jumping into the PC version, you realize how many effects and texture details have been removed for the port to the Quest. Weather effects, more advanced lighting systems, and a much sharper overall image make the PC version the version to get if you have the option, as it simply was a prettier experience. But Quest users, you are getting essentially the same game, making it a if you don't see it, you likely won't miss it situation. Now, Iron Guard is not a visual feast to be sure regardless of platform, but has enough world and unit detail to keep the world interesting enough to play inside. Sound wise, the game sounds... Well, it sounds like what you might expect from a game of this genre to sound like. Weapon sounds are serviceable but nothing special, and can drone on a bit when you have 30 turrets of the same type all going off at once. A point that is hit home with the lack of any real meaningful 3D audio, meaning the gun sounds pretty much stayed consistent, with the exception of the sound drop off at a distance. Voice acting again is serviceable, hitting above average and never grading too much while delivering the rather paint by numbers story you won't care about. Now the music I have to laugh about is generic 90s hard rock that you might have heard in countless games from that era, but I'll admit it kind of caught me bobbing my head to the chug chug riffage, though I do wish there were more variety to the tracks as they did get old after a while. Regardless, I recommend you turn the music down a bit in the mix and put it in the background. Now for my final thoughts. I love a good tower defense game, and I find that this genre, similar to RTS games, works really well in VR, as you can spread the whole battlefield out in front of you like a kid with a playset. Iron Guard is a fairly meat and potatoes tower defense title, but it's a good one that has an addictive progression system, well-balanced combat, and enough content to keep you shooting for at least a good 8 hours of single player gameplay. Co-op would have been nice, and further difficulty settings for some replay value would have been appreciated, but this remains a good time for those who appreciate these types of games. The VR Grid gives this a 7.5 out of 10. These are far and few between in VR, and Iron Guard stands as one of the best to date, as it sticks to the formula, throws in a few neat ideas, and keeps it fun. Anyways guys, that's it for me. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, hopefully we've earned your subscription, and we will catch you on the next video.